this is the Deck HD. Okay, it looks just like a regular Steam Deck, but you gotta take my word for it because the screen is an upgraded replacement for Valve's original Steam Deck screen. It was also one of the most harrowing tech experiences I've undertaken. Look, I was fully confident in my abilities as a DIY technician right up until I peeled apart my Steam Deck and had a good long look at the process ahead of me. Did I fail or did I succeed? I'm not gonna spoil it for you. You're just gonna have to watch to the end and find out for yourself or spoil it in the comments. Do whatever you need to do. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. The Deck HD has a resolution of 1920 by 1200 compared to the Steam Deck's 1280 by 800. It also has the same anti-glare coating as the screen on the highest end Steam Deck, but boasts an 87% sRGB color gamut coverage compared to the stock display's 67%. What does that mean? Well, in theory, you get better contrast on the Deck HD screen, as well as more vibrant colors closer to real life. On top of that, it's an IPS display and has the same 400 nits screen brightness as the included Steam Deck screen. It retails for $99 or roughly equivalent. The price isn't locked in as of this writing. As for the process of installing it, this is not a project for the faint of heart. If you've never tinkered with PC or console repair, this might be a little too intimidating for you. However, there's no soldering involved and almost everything you need to disassemble and reassemble your Steam Deck is included with the Deck HD kit. And I mean almost everything. A handy little screwdriver, sharp nose tweezers, a plastic spudger to pry and poke without scratching or cracking sensitive parts, another plastic pry tool, a set of those little guitar pick thingies to further help with prying, adhesive strips, and of course, the screen itself. What it doesn't include, and look, this is on me for not reading ahead, it doesn't include thermal paste. And I recently threw away the tube of paste that I bought when I last assembled a PC because I thought to myself, ah, most CPUs come with paste anyway. When am I gonna need this? Well, I live in a rural area, and so I had to drive almost an hour there and back to get some at Best Buy. Long story short, if you're gonna install the Deck HD upgrade, get yourself some thermal paste now. Instructions for the process are seven out of 10. They're pretty easy to follow. I never got lost or did something out of order, but I did mess up just a little on the removal of the old screen because I, again, failed to read ahead. Again, that's on me. Regardless, I removed the old screen just fine and no damage was done to anything other than my fragile ego. The screen installation itself is maybe the easiest part of the whole process. You just put the new adhesive strips into place, remove their protective backing, drop the Deck HD screen in, and press down to ensure the adhesive bonds to the screen and the metal bracing inside the Steam Deck. After disassembling the case, carefully removing connectors, thermal tape shielding, more connectors, and the heatsink for the processor, the actual screen installation is almost anticlimactic. As for putting everything back together, rather than continue the instructions, there's just a line at the end saying, follow the instructions in reverse order, which was a minor hassle. I would have much preferred a full set of instructions just because it would have been a little easier to follow on my phone. By the way, that's where the instructions are. Ultimately, I'm just being nitpicky. Probably the most obnoxious parts of the process are cleaning off the screen adhesive and getting rid of all the old thermal paste from the APU and the heatsink. Other than that, it's not too bad. It's just time consuming and oh, a little terrifying. Once I got everything back together and powered it back on, things were not right and my heart sank at the thought that not only did I fail, I failed in front of the entire merciless internet audience. However, after a few restart cycles, I was greeted with a new custom deck HD splash screen and then it came to life. And I gotta say, kind of a nice upgrade. The colors really are better and the boost in resolution makes for crisper text and images. The anti-glare coating is nice, something you only get on the high-end Steam Deck, reminder. And it's pretty resistant to fingerprints. I don't have any way to confirm this, but it does feel like my Steam Deck is running a little hotter than it did before. Whether that's the power required to push those pixels or it's just my imagination, can't be sure. As for performance, well, yeah, it takes a hit. Yes, I can run GTA 5 or Dark Souls 3 in 1920 by 1200 resolution now, but I can't run them through the Steam Deck interface. I have to boot into desktop mode, otherwise the higher resolution options just aren't available. Once in the desktop mode, I was able to set Dark Souls to the highest setting and it worked, well, pretty great actually. At max settings, it wasn't hitting 60 FPS, but it maintained a playable frame rate, even in some of the busier sections. GTA 5, a game from 2013, has no problems running at 1920 by 1200 with the graphics set to their suggested levels, which look and run great by the way, 
but it feels like the trade-offs between a higher resolution and lower presets come out almost dead even, especially when, like, look, both screens are only seven inches. In other words, I can't really tell if GTA 5 actually looks better or not, or if it's just in my head. Colors definitely seem improved, and I played a little Chained Echoes to test it out. Chained Echoes is a gorgeous pixel art game with absolutely stunning colors and graphics, and it really seemed to pop on the deck HD screen. Resolution is no factor with that game since its graphics aren't taxing to the system, but it really did seem to be an improvement over the brightness and colors of the original deck screen. So, is it worth the trouble? Probably not. Look. If you have a broken screen and are looking for a replacement anyway, I say, yeah, absolutely go for it. It really is an upgrade versus the original screen. But if you're looking to replace your perfectly okay existing screen, it's a little too much work unless you 100% feel comfortable with the real risk, you might ruin your Steam Deck. There are lots of very tiny wires and ribbon cables in there, and if you're not careful, it would be really easy to sever or damage one of them. If you're an experienced hardware hacker, yeah, sure, whatever. Take this project on. For $99, it's a fun little DIY project with good results. And once you're finished with it, you might be tempted to offer your services professionally. Uh, maybe that's just me. In short, the Deck HD is a nice upgrade over the stock Steam Deck screen, but that bump in resolution comes with some obvious performance trade-offs, and the increased color gamut probably won't make up for the hit to the frame rate in more graphically advanced Steam games. Whether or not it's worth it to you is going to depend largely on your comfort level digging into the deepest recesses of your beloved Steam Deck. If you want a challenge or you're already experienced with hardware, yeah, take it on. Why not? Otherwise, maybe pass this one by. For more hardware chatter, check out our review of the HP Omen 32Q, and for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.